Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I want to ask a question this time and that question is who is Jehovah? Now to Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah is the name of God Almighty. It's the most important name in the Bible. They feel you have to use the name Jehovah in order for your worship to be acceptable. But really who is the Jehovah that is worshipped by Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, some interesting facts about the name Jehovah. First of all, Jehovah's Witnesses themselves admit that Jehovah is not the most accurate name for God. In fact, even in their own silver sword, on page 1734 of the regular edition, says, some feel that the name was pronounced Yahweh. And in older versions of their literature, such as the Divine Name brochure, which is no longer available on JW.org, but was published in the 80s, they admit to the fact that most scholars feel that Yahweh is the most accurate pronunciation of the name. Why then do they use the name Jehovah? Well, I'll let them answer. Again, on page 1734 of uh, the Silver Sword, their new Bible, it says, Why then does this translation use the form Jehovah? Because that form of the divine name has a long history in the English language. So basically, they're admitting to you that Jehovah is not the most accurate form of God's name and is probably wrong, but they're using it because other people have already made it known. So that's a direct admission to the fact that they are not making known the name of God. Um, so that's just one interesting fact. But is it really important to use the name Jehovah, which is not the most accurate name for God, in your worship? Well, what is Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11 say? And let me read this right out of the Silver Sword. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, For this very reason God exalted him to a superior position and kindly gave him the name that is above every other name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the ground. And every tongue should openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, the Bible, which was inspired by God, tells us here in Philippians that the most important name to Christians should be Jesus Christ, which is interesting. And what's further interesting, if you look through the appendixes, again, of the Silver Sword, they will admit the fact that the most ancient manuscripts of the Bible do not contain, uh, in the Greek scriptures, do not contain the Tetragrammaton. They don't contain the name Jehovah. So we have a problem here. If the name Jehovah, or Yahweh, was really that important, why does it not appear in the Greek scriptures, in the most ancient manuscripts? If it was that important, why was it that God could not protect his own name in the Bible? And if that got taken out, you are forced to ask yourself the question, what else was taken out? So basically speaking, if you are to trust the Bible, you have to accept the fact that the name Jehovah or Yahweh does not appear in the Greek scriptures and therefore must not be important. Otherwise, how can you trust any of the Greek scriptures? So the whole argument that the use of the name Jehovah is important in worship falls apart rather readily, even under the scrutiny of Watchtower's own literature. So, let's again try to figure out what type of God this Jehovah is. Well, let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 124, and let's see what God had inspired to be written there. 2 Corinthians chapter 124 says, Not that we are the masters over your faith, but we are fellow workers for your joy, for it is by your faith that you are standing. Okay, so God had inspired to write that people, nobody else can be the master of your faith. So, how do Jehovah's Witnesses follow that advice? Well, they make you report the time you spent preaching in field service every single month to them. And if you miss a month, you're considered, considered spiritually weak. And if your hours are low, you're considered spiritually weak. It's almost like they're the masters of your faith, isn't it? And this is just one particular aspect of your faith. Preaching. Christianity is about a lot more than knocking on people's doors. In fact, James chapter 1, verse 27 tells us some of the things that are important to Christians. And again, I'm reading all these scriptures from the Silver Sword. James chapter 1, verse 27 says, The form of worship that is clean and undefiled from the standpoint of our God and Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their tribulation, to keep oneself without spot from the world. 
So Jehovah's Witnesses, or the Watchtower rather, makes you record how many hours you spend knocking on doors and talking to people, but it doesn't keep track of how much you've helped out orphans and widows, which, according to James in the Inspired Scriptures, is the form of worship that's clean and undefiled. So that's interesting. But now if you go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, which I'm not going to read, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you will see that we are told explicitly that different people are given different gifts and that the congregation is made up of many different body members who do not perform the same function. Therefore, the scriptures are telling us that some of us might be better at preaching than others. Some of us might be better at teaching than others. And each of us might have our own little gift that we bring to the congregation, much like a body. Your hand does not do the same thing your foot does, but you need them both equally as much, and so on and so forth. So, there is no metric that is taken by the Watchtower organization for any other form of worship or Christian activity other than the preaching activity. The only other thing they keep track of is basically your meeting attendance. But that's somewhat informal, and that's just based upon people noticing whether or not you're there. So, this God Jehovah that they're worshipping seems to forget what he had inspired in his own Bible. He seems to want people to be the master of your faith, and he seems to forget that the body is made up of several different parts. So, this God Jehovah, who apparently is very concerned that you use the name Jehovah, which is probably not correct, in fact, let's be honest, it's definitely not correct. The way the name Jehovah came about is that a Catholic monk around the 1200s, I believe it was 1273, I believe his name was Raimundus Martini, um, he combined the word, the Tetragrammaton, with the word for Lord, and he basically made a typo. He made a transcription error and combined it into one word, and that ultimately became Jehovah. So this word Jehovah is not a correct name, it's made as a combination of two words, and it's actually not even really a word. But for some reason, to this God Jehovah, it is more important that you use this false, made-up word Jehovah than it is that you use the name Jesus Christ, which, ironically, the Greek scriptures say is the important name for Christians. So this God Jehovah can't even remember what he had inspired to be written in his own Bible. So, what kind of God is this Jehovah? Well, he's very concerned that you use that false name, but he doesn't really care that much if you don't treat each other well. If you know Jehovah's Witnesses, the most important thing to them is that you get out in field service and you get to their meetings, and behind closed doors, it seems oftentimes like all bets are off. Jehovah, we are told, is a very loyal God. But how loyal is Jehovah? You can spend your entire life doing as much as you can for Jehovah by preaching, by building kingdom halls, by going to unassigned territory. But if something comes up and you're no longer able to do that, well, Jehovah has no problem discarding you. Jehovah has no problem kicking you out of Bethel when he's done with you. The current circuit overseer arrangement is that they have to stop when they're 70 because Jehovah doesn't want to take care of them after they've given their life to him. Um, does that really sound like loyalty to you? Does that sound like the type of God that is loyal and has loving kindness? As soon as you're not useful to Jehovah, he suddenly is no longer loyal to you. That's not loyalty. Jehovah expects you to be loyal to him, but as soon as things happen where you can't do the same amount of service, his loyalty to you drops off dramatically. Uh, he looks for other people to take care of you, and he tries to shirk any responsibility he has towards you at all. Loyalty? Indeed. And the things that are important to Jehovah seem to be numbers. If you get out in field service a lot, for example, maybe you're a pioneer. That's what's important to Jehovah. And your personality, not so much. It doesn't matter if you don't take care of widows or orphans. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a good person. You can be an arrogant jerk as long as you're knocking doors and placing literature for Jehovah. And this Jehovah, he says he brings families together, but does he? Well, if everybody in your family doesn't agree on the way to serve Jehovah, 
maybe some don't believe that Jehovah's Witnesses have the truth, well, you're going to push them away and keep them at arm's length. And those other individuals, they may even be Christians. They may talk about Christ more than Jehovah. But that's still not sufficient for Jehovah. Because despite the fact that the Bible tells us the name that's important is Jesus Christ, Jehovah seems to want you to use the name Jehovah. Which again is a false made up name. So who really is this Jehovah that Jehovah's Witnesses are worshipping? The honest truth of the matter is that Jehovah is, in fact, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. That is who Jehovah is. That's why Jehovah is concerned about his name, because that publishing corporation desires to be something special. They claim to be God's organization, but yet when they get things wrong, all of a sudden they're just led by imperfect men. But they can't have it both ways. If they claim to represent God, when they say something that God, Jehovah, did not say, well then, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22 applies to them. How many of you know of politicians that would allow their campaign managers to say things that totally disagree with the politician's platform and yet continue to keep those campaign managers on? They wouldn't. When a politician's organization says something not coming from the politician, those campaigners get fired. At least that's the way it works in the United States. I don't know about other countries. So, this being the case, when God's organization says things that didn't come from him, according to his own standards, they're deserving of death. Of course, I am certainly not advocating violence against anybody, nor would I ever do such. I'm merely pointing out what the scripture in Deuteronomy says. So, nobody take any violent action. That's not what I'm advocating. But, this organization that claims to be God's organization has said things in his name that have not come true. And they have, in a very, very cowardly fashion, tried to say, oh, well, we didn't really, we weren't speaking from God. If you're not speaking from God, then you're not God's organization. And then you don't have the right to slander people who disagree with you and call you on your wrong statements. So again, who is Jehovah? Jehovah is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Jehovah is not the true God. Jehovah is a made-up word. The true God, the definition for him would be found in the scriptures. The most accurate name for God that we know of would be Yahweh. But according to the Christian Greek scriptures themselves, the most important name for Christians is none other than that of Jesus Christ. Go figure, that's why by divine providence, they were first followers of Christ were first called Christian in Antioch not in Jerusalem. So in short, Jehovah is a fictitious character made up by a publishing group that does not understand the Bible and attempts to use it to control masses of people and make themselves look good. So should you fear Jehovah? The answer is no. Jehovah is not God. Jehovah has never been God. Jehovah is a made-up word. It's a moniker used by a publishing corporation to keep people in fear. If you want to know the true God, you should conduct your own study of the Bible and make that decision for yourself as to what you believe. Myself, I will never direct anybody to any beliefs, whether it's in God or not in God, atheist, whatever. Um, it is up to you to decide for yourself what to believe. You have that freedom, and you have to make that choice for yourself. But I just wanted to make the name of Jehovah known as to who he really is. So thanks for watching.